And now, it's time for LeVac and Gaz to answer the question, Why? 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 Tell me why? Why? <laughs> why? Uh, this is our uh, the segment we do every uh, every Wednesday at uh, four o'clock. It's called Why. We uh, we sit down and we we come up with a, a topic or two that make no sense to to guys, and we try to make sense of it for everyone. Here's the first one: the New York Knicks are playing the worst team in the NBA, the Brooklyn Nets tonight, and I'm nervous they're gonna lose. Why? Because they suck. Because it. <laughs> Um, Simple as that, huh? Right. You, uh, we had we had George Sedano over here not too long ago. Uh, or, oh no, we will. We, five fifteen. Five fifteen. Yeah, yeah. I was talking. Well, you know how he is. He always tells us how bad they are. So I'm getting. I'm preparing myself for that. Don't ask. Don't even ask him the question about the Knicks and the Nets because if they lose tonight, I know we've done like the rock bottom to. thing before. We have to ask. We have to. We have to know. We have to be to rip the bandaid off. We have to have the conversation. The Nets are so bad. I mean, yes. they, they, they won they Ben be. Simmons last year, and they didn't win the lottery. What is the um, – do we know the spread yet? I don't even that? want to look at the spread, because if it's within five points, that is a bad sign for the New York Knicks overall as a franchise. I I mean, I, I, I'm with you. I'm not confident. I'm not confident that they can win this game. Um, the Knicks are three-point favorites. <sighs> I said five. Three is not – that's a one-possession game. We've watched Knicks – games in the fourth quarter end on buzzer beaters last second shots and now we're going to look at having a three-point game against the brooklyn nets knicks I, fans could be traveling to the game it's a couple of bus rides away i uh yeah no I'm, I'm with you i'm not confident in this one either so that's the why is that they just seem to find a way to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory how about this one the espn family of networks has 11 hours of recruiting coverage today why I'm going to start with this one and think, I mean, 11 hours, that's insane. 11 hours we're talking commitments, the hats, the jerseys, the break. None of these guys have played college football yet. I don't know how you can find 11 hours of material. What are Logan, Bill, and everybody doing to get that type of stuff? I, I mean, it, it is pretty, it's pretty amazing. And it, and it's, it just goes to show you how, uh, how big college football really, really is. And, and, there's people now who like college football even better than pro football mm -hmm. for multiple reasons. And I, I think there's always a faction like that, but that faction is growing to it's probably about 50-50 now. And, you know, ESPN knows they've got something special there. They know that, that you know, we're going to have the championship. And then actually, if you go to ESPN.com right now, the Mothership uh, website, there's a whole article on how signing day is the first step to the national championship. So they tie it all together for you. I used to hear this phrase, and I really do believe it's still about college football. They used to say there's only one rule in college football, and that's to win. And winning is the most important thing in any sport is college football because of how quickly the turnaround can be, shorter mm -hmm. schedule, all that. It's not. It's still about recruiting, isn't it? If you bring in a monster class every single season, the people who are your bosses, the ADs, the alums, are going to say, we're going to give you another year. Oh, ESPN has used a top 12 class. We believe in this year's class. In this year's class, you could be a 6 and 16 for a while, but you might get a little bit more rope to hang on a few years just through recruiting. But, man, some of these guys, similar to what we see in the NFL draft, they will never be better than they are right now. They'll be hyped up through the roof, and they'll not live up to the hype because of how big the hype is. Well, it's funny because you look at the five-star recruits, and that seems to be the biggest boomer bust thing. You could, like, if you're named a five-star a five -star recruit going into college, you're either going to be Julio Jones or Don Jones, and nobody's going to know who the hell you were. <laughs> like, like, there's no, it doesn't seem to be any mid-ground. There's no, like, I don't feel like there's any, like, just reliable NFL players who are five-star like recruiters. And they don't have to be. And they, they, they think of these guys, and like there's Davion Clowney's and the Four Nats and Peterson's. Like, there's special examples where you're just freak athletes and you're going to be better. And people knew you are going to be beast when you are 16 or 15. But you're right. The two stars, the one star, the guys in the right positions, they can make things happen. This next one, according to NBC Sports, Carson Palmer has pulled his kids from Arizona school districts. Why? Well, this is interesting because this is usually like like your good reporters, as creepy as it sounds, they'll tell you follow the kids. That's the, you want to know where a player's going, follow his kids. You want to know uh, who's going to sign him, follow the kids. And I know that sounds bad, but in all honesty, 
you, there's been a lot of speculation that Carson Palmer is done in Arizona, maybe done in the NFL. Mm -hmm. Now he's, he pulls his kids out of Arizona schools. That that makes that leads me to think he's leaving, or at least. He's getting a head start on leaving. I thought the same thing as you. Wow, that's really creepy. You found out that information, whatever reporter you are. Two, I don't want to follow up and try to find out whether it's right or wrong. But if you're able to do that, yes, that is the first sign of him leaving Arizona. And let's say, for instance, he is going to play for another team. One-year deal, two-year deal. You can still leave the kids in Arizona. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to play 12 months of the year and say, hey, I'm going to be gone. Just stay here for a little bit. This seems like a retirement move. Yeah, we're going to go somewhere we're going to be for the next 10, 15, 20 years. I'm with you. I, yeah, that's, that's like I said, I, I, I can't remember. Well, actually, I choose not to remember the first reporter who said it to me. But follow the kids, and you'll know, you'll know where the pro's going. Atlanta Falcon defensive lineman Vic Beasley being named the MVP of the Super Bowl is picking up as one of the most wagered on prop bets. Why? <laughs> Vic B well, um, is the Super Bowl MVP. It's got to be good odds. It's got to be because, all right, so you, how do you beat the Patriots? You get pressure on Tom Brady with four, well, only rushing four. Who's the only guy on that defense that you, you think could do that? Vic Vic, Beasley. Right. So, you know, if you believe that the Falcons can beat the Patriots, then you've got to believe in Vic Beasley. I, I I'm like with that. Debo. You know, I'm, I prefer to believe in, in the man I gave right. the I like that answer because we've seen guys like uh, Michael Sam. Or, or, yeah, Michael Sam. Yeah, Michael Sam. When they, I, I was thinking of, like, now, way back, Malcolm. Malcolm Sam. Michael Sam was the former Missouri Tiger. And that's what shows, like, random guys on defense could win the Super Bowl MVP. Right. Dwight Smith won it for the Buccaneers. All it takes is really one pick six, and it can happen. It can change the course of the game. I know he's the best defensive player. I wouldn't touch that prop bet, though. Here's another one that's blowing me away about the Atlanta Falcons. Julio Jones came out today and said, I'm practicing the whole week. Why? He's, he wants to play. I he's mean, gonna, he, can, he played two weeks ago without practicing. But he wants to be with his team. He wants to knock the rust off. He wants to... Look, looking, looking back, you're going to blame somebody if they don't win, right? I mean... The Giants lose to the to you know in in the playoffs to the Packers. Everybody blames OBJ. Uh, you ain't gonna blame Julio Jones. I'm giving you everything I got. <laughs> right. So I, and, and plus, you know, again, when you're talking about the Patriots, what's the number one thing? Hey, we're gonna take away your biggest weapon. Who's the biggest weapon? Julio Jones. Julio Jones. So I'm a, I'm gonna do everything I can. I'm gonna talk to Dan Quinn. All I'm gonna pick his brain because he's a great defensive mind too. And go, how do I how do I not let this happen? Do I have to be physical? Do I have to be elusive? What do I have to do? You know where I'm going to go with this. What? Old Mr. Bubble Boy, me. Want to yeah. wrap all the oh. players in bubble wrap and make sure they don't get hurt? Because my first thought was, if Julio Jones is practicing and something goes wrong in practice and he re-aggravates the injury, he is going to get crushed in his lane. I think, dude, just I'm sit so out. worried about when you have Don't do anything. Why? Because your kid's going to be so just like in a like bubble wrap in a corner. Well, my kid's not, not going to be paid anything. millions of dollars when he's you out of the that. room. You don't know that. He's going to be a great prospect, though. So he's yeah. got those shoulders. Well, he's got the big, a very Poor tall, mother. a, a possible, possible future wife. Your very, poor, very tall. Six your footer. Poor, your poor mother. Last question here. We were invited to the media party last night. Why? We're the media, brother. That, that is the... Okay, I get that's the right answer, but do you think we should have been associated with the people who were on that bus last night in that they didn't want us there? Three years of me doing this. They love me. They love me. I, I, I light it up, man. They, we had fun on the back on the back of the bus on the way back. I was dressed me. in an Albany shirt and, yeah. like, jeans. I felt like I was underdressed. Well, we were going to go change, but we got we stuck here late. And I didn't mind not and dude, changing. Who cares, dude? Everybody, it was, there was a guy there. It was, um, he had a man bun. He was wearing swim trunks and Hawaiian shirts. He wasn't a part of the media. I don't know how that guy he got was. in. Yeah, he was. Sure? That's how he got in. He's part of the media. There, just, there was there was cowboy hats. There, and, dude, the mascot for this for this year's Super Bowl is what nightmares are made of. Yeah, he was really, really weird. I felt like our crew was more likely to the crew next to where we're staying. The media part, although fun, it just wasn't usually what we like to do. Like, we were the ones causing the mischief on the bus. That's always me, though. Let's, I, look, you, here's the thing. It's... Some of these, some of the media, they act like they're better than they really are. We, we, we're pulling your card, okay? You, you get to talk sports for a living. <laughs> Shut up and enjoy yourself. That's right. Don't act like you're like you're all high and muddy, yeah. pushing nope. the nose up to people. N nobody in this room is splitting an atom or curing cancer. So, so just shut up and 
pass your, me a beer. Drink your free beer. Yeah, shut up and pass me a beer. Yeah, you give away free beer and food, and you think guys like us aren't going to show up? That's what I'm saying. Like, that's the type of people who should be there. I was happy with the turnout of the media party and that everyone behaved themselves. You know who I didn't see at the media party? Who did you not see? I didn't see Danny Cannell from the Mothership ESPN. Are we going to see him today? Uh, we're going to see him next. Danny Cannell joins us live on Radio Row here in the George R. Brown Convention Center. Uh, LeVac and Gaz, thanks to our friends at Bud Light. That's next.